Hello, my friends. Today is the first day. I'm going to introduce myself. We are going to jump in. And whether you have made it here live today, welcome. I am honored to share this information, this masterclass with you and explain a little bit more about what it is, why I'm doing it, and how I want to help impact your life from this uh, five next five days. So my name is Kathy Prohorov. If you don't know who I am, uh, hello. I am actually going to be 52 tomorrow. So that is an exciting thing. I'm going to have my birthday during this presentation week. But the, the whole plan of what I want to give you is due to the lack of information, the conflicting information of what's going on during menopause or perimenopause and midlife and why those are two different things colliding into one space and time and why you might be feeling all of the symptoms, maybe not realizing some of the symptoms are due to this stage of life. So hopefully this gives you a lot more clarity, uh, a lot more empowerment to just get out of the overwhelm because so much of us, so many of us are stuck in overwhelm on what is happening to me and what do I do? So in this masterclass, in the next five days, you're going to lose, you're going to lose, you're going to learn how to lose fat naturally and also uh, in a different way than you might have done in the past. And also uh, what's important about this system of how to lose fat at this stage is we want to look at reversing the effects of the aging process because again, it's not just perimenopause and menopause that are an, a, a, a factor right now, creating a lot of resistance for our fat stores, why that's changed. And it's also uh, due to the fact of aging, right? We are now past the age of 40, um, even 35, when the decline starts to happen. So our bodies are naturally now declining. We were building up in our early years up to about age 35 in muscle building and metabolism, everything's working so efficiently, right? When we were younger, hitting age 35, 40, and the decline happens. So all of this really just comes to play. And it's not, it's not your imagination that you're dealing with some struggle with some struggles. So first of all, is this even worth your time? Now, first of all, I don't want to make these long. I do not long like to sit through long master classes and webinars. I get bored. I have too many things to do, as I'm sure you do. So my whole goal, which is why I've spread this apart in five days, is to make these at least 30, no more than 40, 45 minutes, if I have to go over a little bit. Uh, and that is going to be strict. I'm, I'm holding that very, very tight schedule so that you can get the most uh, information and benefits, but not you know at the risk of your time. So you could be spending time watching Netflix, right? Woohoo! We love that. You could be spending time on Instagram or social media or whatever, but time is valuable. It's precious. It's more precious than money because we can never get it back as we're aware of now as the aging process is catching up. So I hope that this is worth your time because I have taken while all the research that I've gone through in the past three years, specifically more than that, but three years I have given my uh, just full attention to this topic. And that's why this is why I'm really excited to share. So uh, a little bit about me and my experience, because you might not know who I am. Maybe you do. And maybe you just don't understand well, why she's been doing this. Okay. So I had been a trainer before I got to 40. I'm actually was dealing with a lot of uh, body issues and, and weight gain and weight fluctuations and just unhealthy habits in my younger years. And when I was introduced to weight training and being able to eat for building up the body of my dreams, my everything changed. And at that point I realized I need to share this with the world. Like more women need to know this. And that's where I started to become, uh, you know, just passionate about training. I became a fitness trainer, uh, NASM certified, AFA certified. I'm also a health coach. So I'm precision nutrition certified. Um, and in Institute of Integrative Nutrition, IIN, a health coach. So this has become like, I'm, I'm so just obsessed with this. But after the age of 40, lo and behold, things started to change. My body wasn't as easily uh, affected by the good results anymore. I started to have that low 
that belly and that low back fat starting to happen. And I, again, I know I've heard this many times from other women, but I hadn't changed anything. I was working out like I had always, I was eating like I have, I have good eating habits. And so I thought, what the, what's going on? This was very frustrating. The, the scale started to creep up first five pounds. And then I dropped again and then it went up 10 pounds and I lost a little bit again. And then it went up 15 pounds. So I've been playing with this weight and, and it had been very, very defeating. I, my, my ego was burnt. I was very sad and upset. And I, I just, I felt like I had lost control of everything that I had ever built up. Not only that, but I started to see physical changes. So these are some of my uh, symptoms. You might be having a, there's a plethora, like there is a list of just so many issues that women at this stage of life are suffering. Uh, hip pain. I had I started suffering. I think about the age of 40, I was training for my fitness competition, which is what I was doing here, which is why I had abs. <laughs> My abs aren't always that defined and uh, not right now anyway at all. But um, the hip pain became a huge issue at the age of 40. It, it became so debilitating that in the morning I had to literally, guys, I had to pick up my leg with my hands and lift it up and over the edge of the bed so I could get out of bed. It was heavy. Um, I had gone to uh, the doctor, my massage therapist. I mean, obviously I... Um, wasn't getting the response. I was doing all the things that I, I could do. I, there was nothing wrong with me. And it was very frustrating, very frustrating. So it was just, you know, chalked up to, oh, you're overtraining. And I wasn't, uh, I had actually been recovering and th just different issues that were, you know, a question mark, needless to say. I later learned, uh, started drinking electrolyte water. And, and I'm not saying that's a a game changer for everybody, but literally erased the hip pain completely. I was able to do all the things and I didn't have it. And recently I thought, well, maybe don't need as much anymore. And I started to decrease that guys, my hip pain came back again. It was so weird. And so I'll talk more about that. My story on that. Um, when I talk about the nutrition and the supplements, um, but here are just some of the other issues that I was struggling muscle loss. I lost a lot of muscle uh, tissue during COVID. There was a lot of stress and we had uh, fun events in our life. We had two weddings planning and uh, hosting. Those were beautiful. But again, the stress of all the planning took over. COVID was happening. Um, I was still running my business online. Needless to say, I suffered because as women, we take on the world and who suffers, we do. And, and that's pretty much the reality of what's going on right now, among all the other uh, issues that are happening. My mood swings are all over the place, severe fatigue, severe. Like I would wake, I would wake up in the morning and do my normal routine in the morning, go through my day by two o'clock. It was something about two o'clock. It was like I, my, my energy button shut off and I had no energy. I literally had to go lay down. Like I was just crashing. You know, that tired feeling that you can't fight. It was so, so strong and severe. Uh, exhaustion, just really didn't have the get up and go that I had done before. Sleep disturbances, like nobody's business, which we are going to talk more about this week. Uh, energy slumps, just up and down, you know, some days higher, some lower. Um, and then fears, fears about things that I hadn't really thought about or cared too much about before just started to creep in. Weird anxieties, some depression feeling like all of these are all can be all chalked up to, you know, the stage of life. So welcome. Hey, how come I can't switch my screen? Welcome to midlife. So grab a pen and a paper. Uh, again, I'm going to keep this very uh, time consistent. So next 30 to 45 minutes, well, it's not going to be 45 now, but 45 minutes in total for these calls, uh, maybe 30 minutes if we can crush through the, the uh, content. If you guys have questions, uh, all I'll have you do is go to where wherever, whether you're in your phone or your laptop, find where it says chat, click on that and you just type in your questions or comments throughout the call and I will answer those. You guys can chat together if you want to, it's kind of fun. That doesn't go into the recording, it's just fun for the live. So who am I, why should you listen? Well, I gave you a little bit of a background. I am a mom, 
Uh, I got three grown kids. I have been married 30 years, just, just about 30 years. Um, fitness professional, been in the industry for over 25, actually 30 years now. I've actually competed in a fitness competition, which is one of my big uh, bucket list goals. Um, I'm a business owner. I have owned my personal training and now my online coaching business for I don't know, online coaching now since 2018. Before that, I was running my my personal uh, coaching business. Um, I'm a friend, I'm a daughter, I'm a sister. And I'm now dealing with these midlife changes that I am assuming you are too, because why else would you watch this? Uh, and, and this is most likely where you're stuck in your personal struggles now, all right? Now, here's why. Women's lives, so we have two halves of our life. We have the first half. The first half is where we're building up. In our younger years, we're getting our education, we're starting our careers, we're starting our families, we're caring for others and everything else. And we can, you know, run more uh, efficiently. Again, our metabolism's running higher. We have more energy. We have the youth on our side. So we don't really have to put a lot of attention on ourselves. So a lot of times we do get pushed aside or we push ourselves aside uh, and we just stick to the bare minimum. And that's fine. It got us to this point. I'm going to assume you've crushed through some amazing hurdles in your life and you're still standing, like you're here listening to this. And so I give you a lot of credit and uh, you have so much more to, to give. Let me just tell you, like the next chapter, I can only, I, I can only guarantee that we can do so much more. Uh, I can't guarantee it, but I can only say that we can do so much more with the right systems and strategies in place. So the second half is where now we can choose like what are, and what am I not happy about from the first half of my life? And now I can recreate because chances are, you know, if you have kids, they're getting older or if they're not already grown and left the nest or you know, they don't need as much attention, right? Unless you had uh, babies young uh, as you were older and that's, that's fine too, right? But you'll be able to use this as you progress through the stages of life. But now you can look back at what you'd like to change, right? And make the next chapter into what you've always wanted to create, whether that's your work and your relationships and if you travel more or what do you want to do to save for something? Like, what do you want to do? Who do you want to be? Maybe you want to just recreate and, and change everything, right? And this is the time you get to do this. And this is an exciting time. So instead of being frustrated and stressed out, I want you to get excited because the pain and frustration of this stage of life means that number one, again, we have weight gain and we're going back to these old diets and they're not working. So we're just completely confused, overwhelmed, uh, maybe losing weight, but then realizing we're losing muscle, which is a problem. We are going to talk more about that this week too. So belly fat gain, maybe aches and pains. Like I shared my joint aches and pains. You might have it there. Shoulders. We have lower back issues. We have hip issues. By the way, if you're dealing with hip issues too, that is a reason, a cause of lower estrogen levels. So that is tied right on into this midlife change where I thought that was you know, phenomenal. It wasn't, it wasn't my imagination, nothing I was doing wrong. It's due to the estrogen levels and the mineral uh, absorption in our body that we, we have less uh, ability as we're getting older to absorb minerals in our bones, which is why women grandmas, uh, for, you know, aging women are known to be rushed to the ER for dehydration. And they're not always truly dehydrated. They're underhydrated because of the minerals, but I will get to that on that day. Um, maybe you can't sleep. You're up at night, tossing and turning. You're dealing with maybe hot flashes, night sweats, uh, mood swings, emotions, like erratic emotions that are affecting your relationships. Uh, and just not feeling like yourself. Like, who is this person? I, I don't understand what happened to me. Now, the results that you want are simple, right? Like, we want to feel good. We want to lose weight or lose the fat, I should say. We want to be able to move better and, and, and feel like we're actually handling this aging process in the best way possible. We're not being broken down. We want to thrive. I feel like this generation and, and on is the next generation of not allowing midlife to hold us back. Like I remember my mom and my grandmother's age, it was just nobody talked about the stage of life. Like I didn't know all of this until I started to experience it for myself and talk to other people and then research it. And then I started taking this to my mom saying, 
what the heck? Like, why didn't you ever talk about this? And it was, it was one of those uh, topics that, you know, you just don't talk about it. You just endure it and you just move on with life. And I think that that is such an old fashioned idea and I can't stand it. And I, I know it has to change. And I know that we all, uh, we deserve that. We deserve more knowledge and more power. We want to sleep better, right? We want to wake up feeling rested. Like we had such a good night's sleep and we want to have community of women that understand us and get to just thrive together as we go through this amazing transformation. I don't want to call it a transition or a life change or whatever. I want it to be the transformation that you get to choose and improve from whatever you experienced in the first half of your life. That next chapter is only going to be that much better. And I want to share this. I uh, came across this in my studies. Um, and if you don't know who Brene Brown is, she uh, go look her up. She's got a bunch of amazing content books online. She's got a uh, TED talk, maybe more than one. She talks about shame. She talks the topic shame because who talks about that, right? And and she's just, it's so raw and so just empowering. The, the, she just opens her heart up and soul up and, uh, and, and we all have been holding on to these things in silence. So she writes, um, this, you can look, look this up, uh, called Midlife Unraveling by Brene Brown. And she writes that midlife is not a crisis. Midlife is an unraveling. So I'm just going to read through here. This is not the whole thing, but this was a little excerpt of it, which I thought was pretty powerful. So she writes, by definition, you can't control or you cannot manage an unraveling. You can't cure the midlife unraveling with control any more than the acquisitions, accomplishments, and alpha parenting of our 30s cured our deep longing for permission to slow down and be perfect, imperfect. Midlife is when the universe gently places her hands upon your shoulders, pulls you close, and whispers in your ear, I'm not screwing around. All of this pretending and performing these coping mechanisms that you've developed to protect yourself from feeling inadequate and getting hurt has to go. Your armor is preventing you from growing into your gifts. I understand that you needed these protections when you were small. I understand that you believed your armor could help you secure all of the things you needed to feel worthy and lovable, but you're still searching and you're more lost than ever. Time is growing short. There are unexplored adventures ahead of you. You cannot live the rest of your life worried about what other people think. You were born worthy of love and belonging. Courage and daring and are coursing through your veins. You were made to live and love with your whole heart. It's time to show up and to be seen. I love that. Um, and I can only imagine that, you know, that's just such an impactful. If you do read the whole article, it is mind blowing. She is amazing. So, and if you're here, my friend, you are a fighter. I know this. I know this. I don't have to even see. I don't even have to know if you're watching this on a recording because most of us who don't truly want to fight back against what's no longer working for us, we don't choose to show up. Those who choose to bury their heads in the sand and ignore the rest are the ones who just don't want to deal, right? I can't. I don't want to see it. They're not going to be here. But that's not you. You, my friend, I know have undoubtedly struggled through various difficult situations. You've gone through some hell situations in your life and you've survived. You're here. And that shows the warrior, the fighter, the amazing version that you have become. And that proves that you're going to survive this midlife challenge too. So don't let it don't let it scare you. Let's join arms, link arms, and move forward. So the middle age spread, aka belly fat, right? That's what we're all, I, it's not the main issue. I know that there's all these other symptoms that we're dealing with, but this tends to be the one thing that most of us think we can just handle with what we've used to do, do before. And then we are overcome with frustration when nothing changes. Sometimes we even get a little bit more of the belly fat or the weight increases more when we're restricting. And that's like mind blowing because wasn't it calories in versus calories out that was supposed to take care of this problem? But it is no surprise, first of all, that our hormones are changing, right? They are fluctuating. And if you're post-menopause, which means you haven't had a period for over 12 months, yay you, but you're still having symptoms. Like there's still things that you have to 
take note of, you have to still, <clears throat> still uh, address and maybe get help with. So all of this is just encompassing. We have pre pre-menopause, right? Before any of this happened, we have perimenopause, which is the between stage, which is where a lot of us are. Um, and then we have post-menopause. So if you're, you know, beyond most, I think the average age, age for menopause is 51. Well, I'm not there yet because I'll be 52 this week. And I have not, you know, my periods have been all over the place. Um, but again, we know that our hormones are changing. Your periods might be fluctuating or gone forever. Uh, and life has become a little unpredictable and confusing AF to say the least, right? And where's our post-menstruation party, right? Like we had that menstruation uh, event in grade school, I guess most of us have, maybe some of us didn't, but I remember this huge, you know, this like hush, hush, uh, celebration or event. I don't know if it was a celebration, but we got pamphlets and we got this time away from class where all the girls were brought into the stadium or the cafeteria and we were showed a video. It was a little embarrassing, kind of gross, but you know, we were given pads and maybe some tampons and, but it was just this rite of passage. Like I'm a woman, I'm going to be a woman. And that was kind of a cool thing. Right. And that's where I find it's a little depressing that we have no information at this stage of life. And even the information, when you go and research, it's so conflicting and there's really no, no depth to it. So what I found, the truth of it and why it's so limiting is that 20%, guys, 20% of OBGYNs, when they're going through their internships, only 20% get any type of menopause uh, trans, any training on menopause. So that just shows you like, you might, you might go to your doctor hoping for some help and they really just have some basic information and it's not personal. It does nothing for you and you have to go and research. So this is what I know I had to do again with my hip issues and some of the other symptoms. I know so many women I've talked to who have had to go and just take tests. They had CAT scans and tests galore thinking something was completely wrong with them only to find the right doctor who finally says, huh, you're just in perimenopause. And they're like, what the heck? I thought I was, you know, I thought I had this terrible disease or my body was breaking down. So it's very, it's just, it's sad that we're in 2023 and this is still a confusion. So, but I just want to give you all the clarity and say your body is not working against you guys. This is part of the normal aging process for us. Our body is now moving from childbearing years to no more kids, having no more childbearing years. Whether we had kids or not, that is just the natural transition and it's okay. Yeah, there's some sucky parts to it that, you know, affect some women more than others. Some have just a breeze, some have like really excruciating issues. Some have a short time period, some ex are extended like up to 10 years or so. And, you know, there's, there's really no fairness there, but again, it's all part of the process. So it's not that your body hates you or you did anything wrong. It's just nature. Okay. And most programs that I have researched over the past three to five years are geared, uh, that are geared to women over 40, all that they're recommending to lose the belly fat is the lower calorie. Again, the 1400, 12 to 1400 calorie range food uh, plan and maybe high intensity workouts, maybe not as often uh, with some strength training thrown in. And those are counterintuitive when we are putting it together in this, in this way to be able to lose fat at this stage. It does not work anymore. And if you have tried it and you think that you're broken or you're doing it wrong or you have to cut back more, it's not you. It's the program. So uh, I, I want to give you that just sense of relief too. So what's happening, right? You might be struggling, unexplained body fat, weight gain, again, might be going up and you're not doing all the things to gain weight. Uh, diets and exercise, things that you used to do in the past, they're no longer bringing the results. They might even be making it worse. And again, maybe you're dealing with energy slumps, fatigue, joint aches and pains, hot flashes, night sweats, sleep problems, insomnia, anxiety, depression. 
the list goes on. I didn't want to bore us with all the, the symptoms, but there are a lot, and we will talk more about all, most of them as we go through this week. So what's happening on a basic level is your, your belly fat is being caused by your dropping estrogen levels and the insulin resistance that's happening because of that. So the culprits of your stubborn body fat it's not as simple as it was in your 20s and 30s. It's not calories in, calories out. Oh, there you go. <laughs> we changed it. It's good. This time, it's the fluctuating hormones, which, again, are normal, but they're causing a whole different reaction. So, again, it's not you. Estrogen has been working hard for us when we were younger, keeping our metabolism humming, doing some other amazing things. But now that our ovaries are producing less and less estrogen, metabolism becomes affected and it isn't as amazingly quick uh, up to speed as it was before. Not that we can't change that though. So that is going to be a, a huge part of this, uh, this masterclass. Um, and then when you add to that, the, the change of the insulin resistance, now we have a problem. Like we have a big problem and why our body is now distributing the fat, whether we have been changing anything or not, we are now going to hold weight, body fat around our bellies, more like men. And that's just, again, life is changing. So this is where the body resorts now to storing more of the body fat. And as a result of the insulin resistance, it's being stored mostly in our belly and around the lower back. So again, nothing wrong with what you're doing. You are not doing anything wrong. Um, you're actually in the right place. And I'm, again, want to give you everything that I wished I was fine. I was seeing when I was started looking for this topic. So here are some of the common myths that I heard, I've heard. i heard about this phase. Um, and I'm just gonna share a few of them, there's a lot. But the first one, uh, I've heard people saying, gaining belly fat is inevitable. Like you just, you're going to gain belly fat. No, it's not, <laughs> okay? It happens, yes. I think nine out of 10 women at this stage of life do gain the belly fat, but it's not inevitable. You can decrease the belly fat both, or either before, during, and after menopause by just making some simple changes to your diet and your daily routine. Again, I'm going to give you all of this through this next week. Another myth is hormone replacement therapy known as HRT or HT, or there's, there's other ways of uh, shortening it, is dangerous. Now, the truth is that HRT can be helpful for many women, right? You don't have to take it, but it's not bad if you do. And if you're a little conflicted and you need to know personally for you, uh, if it's something that's going to help you or harm you, you'll need to talk to your doctor for more information. I am not a doctor. Uh, I cannot give you that uh, type of uh, suggestions, but I'm going to share with you everything that I've learned and I will tell you where to take it from there. Myth, uh, HRT can help you lose weight and belly fat. Now, the truth is that while HRT can actually help with your symptoms of perimenopause, menopause, it's not a magic bullet for weight loss. So don't count on it to, to do anything magical there. Uh, it's not a diet pill. A myth, everyone will get brittle bones and need to take medication because aging is taking over and kicking our butts. And the truth is when we make some lifestyle changes, simple, not always easy, but simple. You can significantly improve bone density without having to take any medication. All right. And another thing I want to share before we jump into today's topic is there are no right or wrong choices for you. You get to choose. You're a grown ass woman who gets to make her own decisions, right? Maybe you choose HRT, but maybe you don't. They're both right. If they, one of these work for you, that's the right choice, right? Maybe you choose to take natural supplements and eat all the good foods and, you know, take, take initiative there, which you probably want to do with the foods anyway. Maybe you don't. <laughs> Maybe you just want to go all natural and you don't want any supplements. You don't want to do any medications and any hormones. That's good too, guys. The best choice really for you is the one you choose. So I know there's a lot of information and there's a lot of opinions out there and this is bad and that's bad and this is dangerous, guys. Again, I've been do I've done so much of the research and the diving deep. I can say from my own perspective that I believe any choice that you find that is going to work for your personal experience, uh, whatever you're dealing with, your symptoms, uh, your your background, your you know lifestyle, any any health risks that you have, it's going to be the right choice because it's it's made for you. So don't get hung up on what other people are saying or doing. It has nothing to do with you. You are a unique individual who gets to make your own dang choices. 
So welcome to your midlife transformation strategy. So step one we're going to go through today is our assessments. Because once we know what's going on in our daily current reality, then we can set the goal. Now, here's how this is going to work. Step one is truly just looking at what is. Because if we don't know where we are, it's like going in, hitting a, a destination in your map, like you want to go somewhere and you hit it in your phone and you plug in the end goal, end result, um, but you don't have a starting place. So there's no way you're going to be able to get a route. Like you're not going to get the map to get there because we don't even know where we're starting from. So I'm not going to go and tell you what to do until you know, where are you starting from? What are your current uh, results? Where are your current assessments? And another important part of this assessment is that I highly suggest taking assessments at least once a month to see, okay, where am I now? Based on all the things I'm going to be sharing with you this week, and I'm going to be giving you everything. Okay. So you're going to be able to take this and use this and take your own assessments, move forward and continue to get better. And yes, surely enough, that goal will become a reality because these are the right steps and strategies to get you there. And it is very personalized too. So don't think I'm giving you like this broad, uh, program. Step number two, then you're going to commit to the daily strategy because I'm going to help you uh, write out your daily strategy based on your assessments and your goal plan. Because if you have a point A and a point B, then we can we can draw the map together, right? And then all we have to do is do the daily things. And that's as easy as it is. And then again, once a month, step three is to assess the results and adjust as needed. Because if something's not working, right? and you'll be able to see that by the assessments, well, then you can make slight adjustments. And one book I will suggest, that I've suggested this to uh, uh, the ladies in our Superstar Elite program, is called The Slight Edge by, I think his name is Jeff Olson, O-L-S-O-N. And in this book, he talks just about the slight little adjustments. Uh, he bases it off the space shuttle when you know, the space shuttle's on, in route, it's always slightly off. You know, it's never completely on, on route. It's slightly off. So they're always constantly having to reroute it, reroute it, reroute it. And if they didn't reroute it, they wouldn't get to their destination. The same thing is true for us. Like we get so rerouted through our life or uh, changes of life or uh, changes in our schedule or excuses or whatever come up. And we let that define us and we let ourselves just quit. My like, God, ah, it doesn't work for me. I'm going to find another program. No, it's not the program that you need to find. It's following the strategies until you get there while you're assessing and making minor adjustments along the way. Okay, so this is such a huge and powerful uh, reality to where most of us have struggled before. Um, before it didn't matter as much. So, um before we jump into our assessments, weight loss, my friend, does not mean fat loss, which we are going to go into depth on. And you can see here, uh, just based on these photos, and you can see the the weight, her current weight um, in the, each of the photos, this is a uh, five pound blob of fat. So this is what this looks like in your body. This is a five pound, I think it's five, five pound blob of muscle. So imagine when they say muscle weighs more than fat, no, a pound of anything weighs a pound, right? It doesn't, it's not different. Like if you weigh a pound of feathers and a pound of fat, they're both a pound. They're not different. It's not like the pound of feathers weigh less than a pound. Of, no, it's a pound. What they're meaning is that this blob of fat obviously looks a lot more. Um, so it's five pounds of this blob of fat where muscle is like more defined and more dense and it looks so much nicer and compact and it's five pounds. So it looks like, huh, that's a smaller piece right there. So it must weigh more. It's the same. It just looks better. So imagine this under your skin in your body versus the big blob, which do we want more of, right? So we want to have more of the dense muscle tissue, which is what we're going to be talking about, how to save what we have, preserve it like it's more than gold because it is, uh, and why it's dangerous when we're not doing that and get rid of as much as the blobby stuff that we can. But fat is not bad. That's one other thing I want to share with you guys. Fat is not bad. It is necessary for so many uh, of our functions. We just want to reduce the amount that some of us have if it's not working in our favor, right? 
Um, so you can see here, she ha has her photo here, which I would call this kind of like a skinny fat. She's skinny, right? But she's not fat, but she maybe has more fat on her. She's 123 pounds, 56 kilos, if that's how you, I don't know. I know, I know the pounds, so uh, that's lost on me. Um, and then here, she's 132 pounds, so she's gone up quite a bit, almost 10 pounds, but she looks much more uh, tight toned, right? Uh, because again, she's doing uh, strength training, so her muscles are more defined. So she's holding on to more of this, less of this, which she's gonna weigh a little bit more, but she's gonna look a heck of a lot better and be more healthier in the long run, strong and capable of handling the aging process. Um, and then here you can see she's even gone another five pounds, but she looks even leaner. So at the after the age of 40, guys, it is no longer like a choice. We must prioritize fat loss and retain as much muscle tissue and build more than we that that we can and we are in control of that like we have to control that we can't just mindlessly eat whatever and go for a run and pretend that we aren't breaking down over the like if we're not prioritizing strength training we're breaking down where are we breaking down like we're breaking down just doing nothing right so here are the dangers of focusing on scale weight only when we have dieted and dieted in the past, which I am 100% certain we've all done, right? To some extent, we've lost weight, okay? And weight is what we, we've been taught that is the success, right? When I see a lower number on the scale, yay, success. And this, I want to share a little story about my results three years ago on what this was not a yay, but I, even though I know better, I was celebrating like it was a yay. Uh, but when we've lost weight and whether that, we don't know if that was water, we don't know if it was fat, we don't know if it was muscle. It wasn't clear. But it also didn't feel like a problem because we were under the age of 40, right? It wasn't a big problem. We weren't in the breakdown phase. But now that we're over 40, our bodies are breaking down due to that aging process. And that is creating additional problems aside from the extra fat gain. So quick story. Um, I do have a little time, but we are, we're getting to the end. I promise I'm not going to take more, too much more, uh, about three years ago. Again, I shared in the beginning when I had been under stress, uh, during COVID, <clears throat> a lot of things going on in life and I wasn't taking care of myself. Again, I pushed myself aside, which I'm sure many of you can relate, probably all of you. And I wasn't eating as much as I wasn't prioritizing my foods as I had always done before because I was so busy planning two weddings back to back and working a business and being home with COVID and dealing with all of that. It was chaos. So I realized later that I wasn't taking time to make sure I was eating enough. I was still working out, but in that challenge of continue to work out, not getting the food, not taking care of myself with the recovery and the rest. I lost so much weight in that time. And so my weight kind of dropped and I was like excited. I was like, Woo! I was, I was gaining weight and now I dropped it. I was so excited. But then later it, it became very clear that I lost a lot of muscle tissue. Like I saw it in my body. It was so, so depressing because I realized, what did you do? Like just for that ego boost of a number on a scale, you put yourself in danger. Like we are putting ourselves in danger for the future because the more that compounds, the worse and more problematic that becomes. So how are we going to assess, guys? Pens and papers. And you're going to get, if I have your email, if you've been getting the emails from us, uh, you are going to get this homework sent to you today along with this recording. So step one, let's see where you are. Again, we want to know where you are today so we can go on to the next four days together and create your game plan. So we're going to assess your current results. Where are you today? The first step we're going to assess is your waist to hip ratio. Now, why? Why would I do this, Kathy? Well, higher numbers, when we do this assessment and you get a high, too high of a number, can lead to higher health risks. Most likely does lead to higher health risks. So we'll know if you are in a danger, more dangerous stage and we really have to prioritize you know, where you're at. So that's gonna be how we're going to uh, create your, your strategy for your game plan, okay? So this is gonna make a big difference. So how do you do this? I want you to grab a tape measure and I want you to find your waist circumference, such as all the way around your waist at your belly button level. So all you got to do is stand in front of a mirror, or get your somebody to help you and your family um, or best friend. 
at your belly button, I usually start right at the middle of the belly button. I take one, uh, hold one end of the uh, measure tape there and I wrap the other side around. Now you don't wanna pinch it so tight that you can't breathe, but you don't wanna have it so loose. Just have it nice and taut. Do you guys know that word taut? <laughs> just like nice and just perfect, perfectly lined up, whatever that means, Kathy. And write that number down. Okay, that's your waist circumference or your waist size, right? If you were to measure your waist. And then I want you to stand in front of that mirror. I want you to put your feet together and think, I like to think of a mermaid. Pretend you're a mermaid. Now wrap that tape measure around the widest part of your hips. And you're going to see that if your feet are together and you're standing in front of the mirror, you're going to see your hip bones. You're going to see that widest part all the way around your booty, right? I want you to wrap it all the way around again, not super, super tight or too loose, nice and taut, um, and take that number down. So now you have your waist and your hip circumference. Divide your waist circumference by your hip circumference for your waist to hip ratio, all right? Once you have this number, again, you can do the calculations, a ratio that's higher than 0 0.85 for women means a higher chance of health risks. Now, this is not bad. You don't have to panic. This is just going to help us create your strategy and your game plan this week, okay? So no need to panic again. This is all just part of the process, and we're going to do this together. Now, the next part is your bone density. Now, why does this matter? Well, again, we're aging, right? Bones can become less dense as we age, and if too much is lost, we can develop osteoporosis, and that is very detrimental. So we want to avoid this as much as possible, um, as much as we can. So how to do this? Well, the best is to get a DEXA scan, go in, go see your doctor, and get a professional scan uh, to test your bone density. So I will recommend this as the first and you know most priority uh, test. But in the meantime, if you want to take this, uh, I have two other options. One's called the fracture risk or the FRAX assessment tool. It will look like this. Um, and this is the link. I'm going to send you the link. I mean, if you want to write this down, take a screenshot of this, you can. Um, I will send this to, you know, you'll have this as your homework. So you'll have the link. You could click it and it will take you to a page like this where you can answer all these questions and then calculate it. And it will tell you your bone density kind of the score, you know, how they'll score you. Okay, so that's the second option. And the third option, which is the one I just did, and I was very happy with my number. So, uh, you know, that was kind of like a whoo, relief, but I wanna keep it that way. Um, an at-home assessment. Now, this is just for fun. I want you to go and go up to get the DEXA scan as soon as you can, like within the next few months to a year, that would be amazing. Um, but in the meantime, the at-home assessment works too. You're gonna take your weight and go to the conversion of, of kilograms, okay? I had to go to, I, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna lie. I went to Google and <laughs> how much is this much weight in pounds to kilograms? So, um, and I found my kilogram, my weight in kilograms, and then take that number and minus your age, your current age, and then multiply that number by 0 0.2, all right? It's not that hard, it's three numbers. And then any number that's, if it's less than two, that's a sign of having, kind of a dangerously lower bone density level. And I would, again, make it make an appointment ASAP if you're lower than two, because that's something you need to get immediate action, take immediate action. Like, don't even wait on that one. Um, but these are three ways to get an idea of where you're at there. So that's your second assessment. And your last and final assessment, our favorite thing to assess is our foods. All right, now this is uh, where I start most of my, or all of my uh, clients. Um, and the problem with where most of us are with foods is we just, we don't know until we know, right? And in order to lose weight, you know you have to be in a calorie deficit, but the old diet programs of the past, they don't work for us over 40, right? We and we're in this huge calorie deficit and our body's like, nope, my hormones are fluctuating. Insulin resistance is causing a problem. And then cortisol is a whole nother thing. We'll get to that on another day, but that's creating havoc. So no weight, no fat loss is being lost. And just that, that whole problem of losing muscle becomes another issue. So counting calories and tracking macros, they kind of suck, right? I mean, if you want to do that, amazing go you some people love to do it still i do not i'm a child and i don't, and i just i'm not a child i think that most of us don't want to live our lives that way right midlife is hard enough we don't want to count our stuff this is where most women struggle right I, I have to count and i can't so just screw it i'll do it on monday or january 1st no 
this is what I want you to do because I'm going to show you the solution on how simple this is. And I promise you, this is a system I've been using for over 20 years. It works. Okay. Um, your homework from today, which is day one, is to start tracking your foods. Just three up to five days in a row. You don't have to do longer than that. When we get these three to five days of foods, not only is it going to start to open your eyes to really what you're doing, um, how much you're eating, uh, and, and I'm, I'm going to tell you right now how to track that if you don't want to measure it. Measuring it is the most important, is the most easiest way and accurate way to assess your foods. So if you have one of those digital scales and they're like 20 bucks on Amazon, if you want to get one, um, you can just weigh your foods on there and then write down how much you had. Or maybe you measure it in a measuring cup, which is not as perfect because sometimes we over <laughs> overdo it. Most of us overdo it. We don't underdo it. Uh, or, But you can do that too. Uh, or you can use the portion um, size of your hand. So if you were going to look at, okay, this is a portion size of a protein, just all the way around your palm. Um, you want to do two cupped hands for your vegetables. Like that would be like a cup of vegetables. Um, you could do a fist size of uh, your carbohydrates, which would be you know, like a half of a cup. And then for your healthy fats, you could do the base of your thumb, which is about a tablespoon. So those are just, I mean, you don't have to like hold it there, but just looking there, like if you're eating out at a restaurant and you want to like know how much, you don't want to pull out a, a scale. It's so embarrassing, right? Or measuring cups, but you can do that by assessing your hand, which is super simple and really helpful. Again, your drinks too, don't just assess your foods. Drinks are really important, especially your sugary, your caffeinated things. Let's see what's going on. And then tomorrow, we're gonna talk about how to assess these results because we're not gonna have three days. Obviously it's one day, um, not even a whole day, but we're gonna be able to take these results once you have them and what to do with them, all right? So homework, look at, I'm, I'm 47 minutes. I know I, I just went a little bit over, but I apologize for that. Um, I want you to take your assessments. I also want you to take your photos, all right? So um, I just skipped that one. Hold on one second. I want you to take your photos of front and, and try to wear like a bra top, a top or a, a sports bra and some like tighter shorts or like underwear or bikini bottom. Just wear a bikini if you have, have that. Take it from the front like this, full scale. Take it from the side and take it from the back. Now, only you are going to see this, right? Unless you want to show people, that's up to you. But take these because they are so powerful. Taking the assessments, because I'm going to send you that email, um, you're going to be blown away at how simple we're going to create this, this game plan, okay? So tomorrow, once you get ready, we're going to cover how to eat. You're going to take the food plan that you are going to be tracking, and I'm going to share with you how you're going to eat, lose fat without dieting, without challenging your body and stressing it out to create more insulin resistance because the estrogen levels are still going crazy up and down. And if you're in menopause already, great. This is going to be a little bit easier for you, but still very important. We're going to talk about what foods work best for fat loss after 40, how to supplement for any common issues at this age, if you choose to do that and so much more. So I want to thank you. I don't see any questions in the chat. So I'm assuming that's it for today. Hopefully now uh, you have a little more excitement. Again, we're just getting the ground floor. And in the next day, we're going to go through nutrition. We're going to go through fat loss. We're going to go through movements. I'm going to give you the whole program to succeed. But today, let's take the assessment. Let's figure, okay, this is where I currently am. And I'm going to the next level. And honestly, guys, this is going to change everything for you. It's going to blow your mind how simple it is. Not easy. Change is not easy, but it is simple. All right. So thank you for, so much for being here. Again, this is recorded. You will get this recording in your inbox by hopefully by this evening and the homework. Uh, but you can start on that right away. All right, guys, we will see you tomorrow. Same time, same place. Thanks for being here.